Hello and welcome to Pock and Rob. This video is part of my Reimagine series and in this one I'm going to tackle something that once I heard about it I couldn't keep my mitts off it and it's the concept of the Beatles Black Album. So this is a plot point in the film Boyhood by Richard Linklater where the character played by Ethan Hawke gives their son a compilation of post beatle solo tracks as if it were a Beatles album. This was rooted in reality as Ethan Hawke himself actually made these CDs for his daughter. It's a huge undertaking. I am condensing it down as if it were like the White Album. This means I am not including anything where they weren't all musically active. So, for that, I'm imposing some rules. The first is, if you've watched this video channel before, you will know that I did a video some time ago called Triscodecophobia, where I imagined a 13th Fantasy Beatles album. If you haven't seen it, go and watch it here. I'm including nothing that is on Triscodecophobia. My second rule is, I'm gonna follow the White Album structure of 30 tracks. And one of the reasons the White Album is 30 tracks is because there are some snippet songs on there, like Why Don't We Do It In The Road or Wild Honey Pie. So some shorter tracks that perhaps are not top draw material are going to find their way through onto my Black Album. In terms of what I'm drawing from, I said musically active. John ceased to be musically active in 1975. This coincided with the end of the Apple era for all four Beatles, and that's my cutoff point. So we're looking at Rock and Roll Shaved Fish for John, for Extra Texture, Better George Harrison for George, Goodnight Vienna and Blast from the Past for Ringo, and Paul didn't release a compilation in 75. He actually stopped with his Apple releases with Junior's Farm in 1974. That's the period we're looking at. Anything beyond that period is ineligible for my copy of the Black Album, with a few exceptions which may be tracks that were recorded during this period but remain locked in the vault and have been released subsequently many years later. They're eligible. They were around at the time. I'm going to also try and follow the, the kind of thematic flow of the White Album and the feel of it, particularly when we get to side four. More to come on that in a little while. In terms of the song split, whilst George's material from 70 to 75 is, is really good, I'm going to stick to the way that the Beatles were doing stuff, which is, as on the White Album, four George songs, two, except I'm going to go for three Ringo songs, and you'll see why when I get to one of them, and the rest split between John and Paul. And finally... No covers. All of the Beatles tackled cover songs during their post-Beatle uh, period. And some of them are terrific. But all original material, please. That's my Black Album. So, before I dive in, I would remind you to subscribe if you've not already done so. Thumbs up to like the video if you enjoy it. And the bell to receive notifications of future content. And let's start with side one. So originally we opened with Back in the USSR, so for the Black Album, I've gone with Jet from Band on the Run by McCartney. There may be something in my brain that likes the, the idea that Jet replaces a song that starts off with the sounds of jet engines landing at, a, at an airport, but it's a good rocker to open the record. The next track is Dear Prudence. So in the place of Dear Prudence on the Black Album, I've gone for one of Lennon's strongest tracks, perhaps over overpraised over the last 50 years or so, and it's Imagine. One of the strongest solo vehicle tracks, how could you not include that on the Black Album? Track three on the original is Glass Onion. Now this is where I've deviated ever so slightly, but for a good reason. This is gonna be a Ringo track on my Black Album, and it's early 1970. The reason I picked this is Glass Onion was hugely self-referential in referring to old Beatles songs and poking fun at people who were looking for meaning in things that really didn't have meaning a lot of the time. Early 1970 is the closest I 
think in terms of a song that is massively self-referential. Ringo is talking about all four of the Beatles, himself included in this song, in specific verses. It's one of Ringo's strongest songs, and it was the B-side to his debut single of It Don't Come Easy. It's a great song, early 1970, and that self-referentiality gives it its place instead of Glass Onion. I don't think there was anything else quite as referential as early 1970 from any of them. Track four on the original White Album is Wild Honey Pie, and it's a snippet. So I've gone with a snippet song. I've stayed with Paul McCartney for Ramon Reprise. It's probably my least favourite thing on the whole of Ram, but it fits, it fits nicely here. We then move into a genuine McCartney song to replace Obla Dee Obla Dar with Let Me Roll It. This is from Band on the Run. And again, it's probably my least favourite on Band on the Run, but it would sit really well here. And actually, I've got a sneak feeling that Lennon would have sung this. It would have suited him. Everybody reckons it's a Lennon pastiche, but it's, it's a great track. The next track is Lennon, and instead of the continuing story of Bungalow Bill, I've gone completely the opposite end of the spectrum, because Bungalow Bill's all right. I picked How from Imagine. We then reach, on the White Album, While My Guitar Gently Weeps, which many feel is the finest track on the whole of the double vinyl set. What I've gone for here is the demo version of Isn't It a Pity by George. It's the version that's on early takes. And it's a fine song, Isn't It a Pity. I think it's a little bit overblown, actually, on All Things Past, both versions. But the demo version where it strips back, it does make you wonder when he debuted it in 66, why they just didn't bother with it and never returned to it. Isn't It a Pity at number seven. The final track on side one of the original White Album is Happiness is a Warm Gun. I have placed here the Lennon track, surprise, surprise, Sweet Bird of Paradox from Mind Games. I think it's a really good ending to side one. If you want to go and listen to that, there is a link in the description for the Black Album, side one. On to side two, my favourite side of the White Album, and probably my favourite side of the Black Album too. The original has Martha, my dear. The Black Album has Another Day from Paul McCartney. We then followed up I'm So Tired on the White Album and replacing it onto the Black Album with It's So Hard. Now, I like the fact that I've replaced a So song with another So song, but it, it, it works musically when you listen through. The next track on the White Album was Blackbird, the best track on the whole record for me. I did debate Bluebird from Band on the Run, but in the end, I've actually picked Single Pigeon from Red Rose Speedway. And I just, I enjoy Single Pigeon a lot. And I think the Beatles would have done a bang up job on it. And yes, it's a bird song for a bird song. Track four was George's Piggies. And I wanted something that, felt a little bit different in the way that Piggies feels very different. I've gone with Apple Scruffs from All Things Must Pass. Track five is Rocky Raccoon. And I've stayed country. I've stayed poor. The only thing that really feels like it fits perfectly in its place is Sally G. I could have gone with Country Dreamer thinking about it, but Sally G is what I've placed in the place of Rocky Raccoon. We now have Ringo's second song on the Black Album, but his first on the White Album, which was Don't Pass Me By. For this, for the Black Album, I toyed with a few possibilities, but ended up settling for Back Off Boogaloo. And I, it's just a great, fun pop single. Track seven on the White Album is Why Don't We Do It In The Road. It's a snippet song, so a snippet song is needed here. The lovely Linda from McCartney. One of the few times that Paul directly references the person that he loves in one of his songs by title. And I, I, it's a lovely little musical vignette of, of no consequence, but just delightful to hear. 
We were placing I Will, the track eight with One More Kiss from Red Rose Speedway. Nice short song. And then finally, whereas side two of the White Album ends with Julia, one of John's greatest late era Beatles songs, I have gone to the Plastic Ono Band album for Love, but specifically the demo version. It's so much closer to the sound of what we got on Julia. Love demo is track nine, concluding the first slab of vinyl for the Black Album. Again, if you want to listen to side two of the Black Album, there will be a link in the description below. Moving on to side three, and opens with birthday. And so I have identified a McCartney rocker that I think could open side three pretty well, and I've gone with Get On The Right Thing from Red Rose Speedway. That was originally recorded during the Ram Sessions. The second track of side three is one of my least favourite Beatle tracks ever. It's Year Blues. I can't stand it. If you've watched my reimagined White Album as a single disc, you'll see that it's the second song culled from everything that was available. I, I hate it. On this Black Album, I've gone for a Lennon track I really like, but has a good feel to it for me, and that's Tight As from Mind Games. And track three is Mother Nature's Son on the White Album. And this is one of the tracks where I have tweaked the rule, as I told you earlier. I have placed a track here that was not released until 1990 on the B-side of Put It There. It's Mama's Little Girl. Now this was recorded in 1972 for Red Rose Speedway Sessions and shelved for 17 years. And I can never understand why, because it would have, it would have been top two, if not the best song on the whole of Red Rose Speedway. It's got a really nice acoustic -y feel, which will mean that it, it, it perfectly slots to where Mother Nature's Son was. And what's more, Mother Nature's Son is replaced with Mama's Little Girl. And I like that juxtaposition. The next couple of tracks are Lennon, just as they are on the White Album. We had Everybody's Got Something to Hide Except for Me, I'm a Monkey, followed by Sexy Sadie. Replacing the first is I Found Out from Plastic Ono Band. And replacing the second is Out of the Blue from Mind Games again. The reason Out of the Blue, which I was going to put on side one, sits here, is when I listened to it again, I thought, my word, the chord structure and the, and the flow is so similar to Sexy Sadie. Listen to it. There'll be a link, obviously. Listen to it again. Because the similarity means that I can't not place it where Sexy Sadie sat. Penultimate track is Helter Skelter on the original. And what could you place Helter Skelter with? That cacophony of guitar and thrashing drums and madness that, that Paul concocted in the studio. I've gone with, in the, I've, in the end, I've gone with Oh Woman Oh Why. The B-side to another day. It's an aggressive rocker. Finally, track seven is, as it is on the original White Album, dedicated to George. We have Long, Long, Long on the original, and it's a song that's taken me a long time to become really quite fond of. And I think it's because my exposure to the White Album was through cassette and then CD, and I always knew what was coming next. And side four was always a difficult listen for me. And Long, Long, Long kind of tips towards that. But you know what? So does the pick that I've put here for George. It's Beware of Darkness. And it's the warning that we're going to take a downturn for side four. So that concludes side three. Link in the description if you want to listen to just that. And now we'll conclude with side four. And as I said, we're going to take a little bit of a journey into darkness. Track one from... Walls and Bridges, number nine dream. This is a lush Lennon song. And one of the things about side four that I think I found disappointing is that it kicks off with revolution one. And I find it pointless rather than disappointing because 
we have the B-side to Hey Jude, which is a far superior version of the same song. So, number nine, Dream, indicates that the dream might well turn into a nightmare. Track two on the White Album is Honey Pie, one of Paul's most maligned contributions to the Beatles in many ways, and his sole contribution on this burgeoning darkness that was side four. On this album, on the Black Album, I have placed Tomorrow from Wildlife. Now, Wildlife, I'm, I'm not fond of, but Tomorrow is the best track on it. And actually, it's enjoyable, fun fluff, and it kind of fits the honey pie slot. The next track was Harrison's. It was Savoy Truffle, which, for me, is the best track on side four of the White Album. For here, I have placed Try Some Buy Some from George's Living in the Material World album. Originally demoed for the All Things Must Pass record. And now we start to turn into some serious darkness. And track four, where we originally had Cry Baby Cry, which I don't enjoy. I've now gone for Isolation from the Plastic Ono Band album. We're, we're, we're heading into some downbeat territory with this track. And I'm going to take you even darker and, and, and downer because at the end of Cry Baby Cry, you have that snippet from Paul of Can You Take Me Back Where I Came From? For this point here, as track 4A, I have slotted in My Mummy's Dead from the Plastic Ono Band. And now we're getting well dark. So, after we've had Cry Baby Cry and then that little snippet leading into Revolution 9, we need to find something that takes the place of Revolution 9 on the Black Album. And what I picked is Loop from Red Rose Speedway by Paul. It wouldn't be a replication of the White Album feeling if there wasn't a track that I absolutely detest and wish didn't exist. The only thing from those solo albums that I could seriously put in this place is Loop. I detest Loop and wish it didn't exist. It takes Revolution 9's spot perfectly. It does mean that John's a little bit underrepresented, but there's got to be something you loathe on the White Album. And to conclude, we return to Ringo. And on the original, it's Goodnight, written by John for him. I've kind of kept that theme because actually Good Night is, is, is meant to, to lift your spirits a little bit after the Nightmare Revolution 9. After the Nightmare of Loop, Good Night Vienna. It's a good time rock and roll song written by John and given to Ringo. It replicates what we've got on the White Album. There will be a link in the description below if you want to listen to Just Side 4. And what's more, I will also put a link in the description below for the Spotify playlist for all four sides as one playlist. So you can listen to the whole thing all the way through. So that concludes my Black Album. Let me know in the comments below what you think of it. Listen to it through and see if you think there is a thematic flow to it like I do. I'll be back soon with another video, which will almost certainly be my track by track ranking of the next in my Paul McCartney series, which will be the album New from 2013. But until then, I remind you to subscribe, like, and hit the bell. And thanks for watching.